Everyone wants to know what we should do to ascend. And even though in the first two parts I discussed how ascension is an automatic process and there's nothing for you to do, there are still things that you do as a result of the process that comes to you. I'm gonna go through some of the things that I did and it may be different for you, but generally speaking, you can take these items, tasks, processes, and apply them to your life in a broader context. These items are not necessarily in a particular order because many of these phases overlap, but some states of awareness need to happen before others. Number one, the path is presented to you. For me, I think I was always on the path. I questioned the nature of my reality as a child and was constantly challenging authority. I was always thinking about who I am, why I'm here, and what I want from life. I did my best to live authentically and be true to who I am. Number two, integrity and authenticity. Part of our journey is to figure out who we are, what we want, and to align our behavior with who we are inside. If we go against who we know ourselves to be, then we slowly poison ourselves. Much of our youth is spent trying to figure out what we want to do, what matters to us, what our values are independent of our family and friends. And when we know this, we must behave in line with our values, act in integrity and wholeness, regardless of the consequences, or we will forever be trapped in living a life in service to others' needs and expectations, which is not living at all. Number three, life challenges. Life presents us with a series of challenges, obstacles, and gifts that are here to partly show us who we really are, partly to learn from and grow, and partly to give us an opportunity to heal. They allow us to look within in order to know ourselves and others better. Healing. This is a 911 trauma center we live in. Bad things happen here. This world is full of suffering. Part of our process is to heal from the trauma we have suffered from along the way. The way to do this is to find the good in it. What did it teach you? How did you grow? What gift did it give you? Make peace with your past wounds, learn to forgive, let go, and use the lesson it taught you to heal and move on. Number five, shadow work. Facing your demons is an important part of healing. We all have qualities we don't particularly like within ourselves, qualities that come out when triggered or provoked. And these qualities are necessary in self-protection but as you become more aware of the pain that is inflicted on others and yourself, when you use these tactics, as you come to understand why you use them, you will eventually realize you no longer need them and are able to forgive yourself for using them in the past. Number six, ego and narcissism. This one is complicated. It's connected to shadow work and healing. If you are an empath, and accustomed to wanting to help others, you might encounter a series of narcissists who take advantage of you until you stop giving so much. You must help yourself first. Concern yourself with your own business and let others be where they are. If someone asks for your help and you are in a position to give it, then give it and give it freely. But know when to walk away. Be aware of narcissists who abuse you and use you for your giving and kind nature and be kind to yourself first in saying no and walking away. In becoming aware of narcissism and its associated traits, you will become aware of these traits within yourself simply by shining a light on them with your own awareness and they will go away. Number seven, being kind to yourself. Putting your own needs ahead of others is important, but not in a narcissistic or selfishly mean way. This is about knowing what you want, knowing what's important to you, and sticking by it for your own sake. Do not allow others to take advantage of you. Set limits, set your priorities, and do not do things that you feel are wrong simply because someone else requires it of you. Do not, under any circumstances, compromise your integrity. 
Making excuses as to why you compromised your integrity is going to consume you with guilt and regret. Number eight, live life on your terms. Figure out what matters to you and how you want to live your life, not by how society has dictated it to you. The reaction to realizing that we live in a matrix run by evil elites is to run off grid and become self-sufficient. So the lifestyle is carved out for you on either side of the mind war. If you do not want to serve the beast anymore, then you must withdraw from behavior that serves the beast. The matrix is the entire construct in which we live because it is your own mind. So it's not something that we can escape from on the external. In realizing this, you will likely lose interest in commonplace entertainment. You will become absorbed in learning the truth and in living a more connected life, one that feeds you and allows you to focus on your healing, your path, and on being mindful. Number nine, lower mind behavior. Shedding lower consciousness behavior is a major part of ascension and should happen automatically. This will involve things like changing your diet to be mindful of what you eat as part of healing and fueling the body, listening to your body when it is out of energetic alignment or ill. You might want to change your exercise routine, either to be more active or even less active. And instead of exercising to lose weight or to look a certain way, you exercise in order to be healthy. You might change your job because you no longer believe in what you are doing or what your company stands for. You might choose to spend more time with family and time on your own. You might stop drinking using drugs. Some people start using hallucinogens, but that's not necessary. You might stop shopping, stop accumulating things, stop caring about fashion and trends, stop following celebrities in the news, you might stop socializing with certain people, stop going to sporting events, movies, bars, nightclubs, concerts, amusement parks, restaurants, and you might lose interest in popular museums and art galleries. You might stop participating in holidays and celebrating birthdays. Number 10, yoga and meditation. Meditation and mindfulness is incredibly important. There are different ways in which one can meditate, but essentially the goal is to clear the mind of thought. Our minds are usually a battleground of chatter, talking about opinions it has on other people or events or things, debating whether you want to do a certain activity or not, worrying over something that hasn't even happened yet, or just bantering back and forth about your daily life routine. Our thoughts cause a tremendous amount of unnecessary stress, anxiety, and mental illness that can be stopped through meditation. If you cannot stop thought easily, then simply become aware of your thoughts and don't judge the thoughts. Observe them, let them pass, but keep meditating on a regular basis until your thoughts subside. Not letting your thoughts run away with you and control your behavior is imperative. When you see this happening, nip it in the bud. Recognize that it is happening, and then ask yourself how you want to feel instead, then focus on that. Steer your own ship, don't let it steer you. As I've said before, get control of your mind or others will control it for you. Yoga will help you with meditation and mindfulness. It helps you stay connected to your body. Number 11, isolation. This is something that happens automatically as a result of the changes you go through. You will find you no longer have patience or tolerance for anyone who is not on the same journey and eventually not on a similar level. You will find your conversations do not feed you but rather drain you. You may find it exhausting to find things to discuss. You will have to hide much of yourself from those around you and so cannot freely express yourself. Socializing no longer interests you because it involves hollow mainstream entertainment or matrix-oriented lifestyle. You prefer being at home or with someone who gets it. You might prefer to read or learn or decode a movie for its esoteric meaning. You might be conflicted in that you feel you ought to socialize, you ought to participate in society. But when society has nothing of substance to offer, it drains rather than fuels you. 
You will simply have to mourn the loss of it and find satisfaction elsewhere. Isolation is a necessary part of the process because it throws you into a state of hyper self-reflection and introspection. Number 12, the truth. Truth is a huge part of the journey and I will have to have a separate video for the impact that the truth has on us. Knowing the truth is so important because it shatters the old paradigm, which must go. The old world was created from the old mind. So for Christ consciousness to rise and take its place, the old mind has to die and the old world too shall die. Knowing the truth about who you are and what this world is, that all is mind and restoring our power is vital to the process. Follow your curiosity even if it leads to dead ends. You will find it always teaches you something. If you get deceived again, there's a lesson in it for you to be more discerning. Whatever you find outside yourself, however, is connected to what is within. Number 13. Go within. You must go within. What does this mean? It means meditating, calming the mind. It means aligning with your inner guidance system, your intuition, being whole, living with integrity, finding your authenticity, knowing who you really are, finding the truth and listening to yourself. No matter what you learn outside, you must trust yourself. Even if you hear the truth and it offends you, trust your inner guidance because you're not ready to hear it. You will return when you are. This is your ego protecting you from hearing something that could either shatter you or could prevent you from hearing it later when you are ready because you now have associated it with trauma or negative emotion. Always trust your inner guidance. It will lead you where you need to go. There are many more to come, so stay tuned for the next part in the series. If you like this video, please show your support for my channel. Like, share, subscribe, comment, contribute. Contributions over $15 will receive a link to the Johnny Depp Dark Shadows material, so please be sure to include your email address. Kindly visit my website, subscribe to my backup channels, join the Discord group. All links are in the description box below. Thanks for listening. Hope you're having a great day. Bye for now.